Hey guys, welcome to Trek Yards Mission Briefing, your weekly dose of Trek discussion. We take a look at a ship, but not necessarily on this wall. A ship station, whatever, from any part of the Trek universe. Um, but Stuart, what are we looking at today, and why is this a special episode? Well, we've got a lot of requests from people to do some Star Trek Online, con more Star Trek Online content. And, well, we all know that they just released the Agents of Yesterday, which has some TOS content, so... <laughs> What better way to satisfy the TOS in me and the STO and everyone else than to look at STO ships that are TOS? TOS and STO is awesome. Toss, sto. Let's do it. Sto toss. We're going to sto toss about the ship. Yes. But what are we looking at? What exact, which one are actually starting off with? Because there's quite a few. Uh, the Ranger class. I think it's the first one you actually get in Agents of Yesterday. I've never, I haven't actually played with the ship yet. I've started doing the mission, the ground mission, but then the server crashed, and so <laughs> I'm kind of, I need to go back in and start playing. But it was yeah, too damn cool ship. popular. Well on the stove. So, oh, I think we'll do another video about our reaction to Agents of Yesterday. We did film one, but it, it sort of went wrong. Um, but how excited were you to know that more TOS ships, original TOS designs, were coming to stove? I love TOS designs, and to see anything new is fantastic because you don't really see anything new. You just see rehashes of other stuff, or mm. you know, TOS versions of like newer mm. ships. So to see something kind of unique mm. is very strange and difficult for people to do, but they've managed to do a pretty good job with their releases. They got some pretty cool, cool-looking ships. So speaking of, we we've seen these ships vaguely, but we haven't read them in depth. So this is the Ranger class. So. I guess this is the first time you're looking in depth. So what are your first impressions of this TOS Ranger class? What do you think? It looks like an NX class. It oh. does. At first glance, I think NX. I mean, there are differences, okay. obviously. Okay. And if you turned it upside down and took off that secondary hull, you'd have a Centaur class. Mm. Just saying. Just saying. So it does bear a striking resemblance to other ships we've seen. However, that's very easy to do with Star Trek ships, especially Federation ships. Yeah. Because there's only so many configurations you can put these things in. So I think they did a great job, though, adding that secondary hull and making it... We can't really see it in this picture, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, for me, I, I'm I was, I'm thoroughly impressed by all these new ships. I think there's only about three original TOS and some and like the Dauntless and some other famous ones, or Deadless class. This one is such a great little uh, reinvention. I mean, it for me, I don't see an X-01 as much as... Okay, well, I do. I do, to be fair. But <laughs> also in the Miranda class, because it's clearly got the roll bar, pre-roll bar, and rather than having the nacelles connected to the, the, the primary hull, you've got it connected to the, the what would be mega phases in the Miranda style. Um, but the thing that really strikes me about this ship, um, just in terms of difference, um, apart from the whole engine bits, is that there is that secondary part coming out of the bridge module. It's not just a single bridge module, there is a separate step, as it were, and this back portion, which does feel nx -y, does feel, um, you know, uh, Akira-y, it does have an extra element, it does give a bit more bulk, a bit more functionality, um, and then obviously you've got this secondary, the two um, pointing out secondary hull pylon things, it's a very interconnected bit, which we don't really see often with Federation ships, let alone TOS ships, but Yes, you're right when you said you know it links to so many other designs, and isn't that what the best kind of Federation ship is? You can see it's a prequel to a Miranda, a sequel to a um, an X01, and yet it, you know, yeah, yes, all <laughs> those things. Yeah, I like that additional step deck that you got there underneath the. I guess that'd probably be the C deck. Usually, you got the B C deck beneath the bridge. Hmm. This one looks like half the size, so it looks like the C deck is that kind of. Step that toad portion with the four windows, which is very cool. I actually really like that look. Personally. Yeah, I like the added detail, and and that it's not so smooth. I kind of like that. I mean, this is this is mm -hmm. it's using the idea of those smooth. Well, basically they've 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 taken the idea of the nacelles and extended it into the two secondary hull pylons. That's the that's the extension of the circle motif. But then you've got the extension of the saucer motif back underneath the, the, the bridge. So these are familiar shapes, but a little bit of detail, and it, it changes it quite a bit. So we don't know the exact size of this ship, um, and we probably should, but we haven't... You know, that, This is the first look. That's the whole point of the show. Do you think that bridge is the same size as a Connie? Would, you be, would that be a guess for you? 
Yes, I do actually. So knowing it'd be exactly the same as so knowing scales, taking that into account, how big is this roughly to a Connie? Just based on your professional Connie opinion, having built a couple. <laughs> um, I'd say very similar in size, saucer wise. Uh, lengthwise, it's probably a little shorter just because mm. of the placement of those engines. But I mean, overall deckage probably around the same. Mm. Basically, because that secondary hull is yeah. it's shorter, but it's still the same kind of height mm. as we see in the Connie. So I'm thinking, yeah, it's probably just a little bit shorter than the Constitution class ships. So a, a stouter version. Yes, very likely. Now, one thing that pops to mind with this picture is I don't see any phaser turrets. Then again, we don't see those on the TOS and Connie either. Yes. But there is that striping, which looks cool. And we've seen striping oh, on other yeah, saucers yeah. before. Uh, sometimes we see red striping coming off the registry, which looks amazing. Hmm. Um, a lot of FASA and stuff in battleships have done that, or hmm. artists have. Hmm. But that almost looks like a phaser ring, which would be awesome. I know it's not. I know it's not a phaser ring. But I think having a phaser ring on a TOS style ship works for me. See, I I love that you said that because I had even linked it and I saw it as detail. But now you're pointing. It, I say, like, oh, how how would a phaser strip look on a TOS style ship? That's really interesting. Like refitting a, a TOS Connie, but with Montel. Oh, well, you know, it works for. Me. Yeah, it, it it really does. Um, I think you know how the Star Trek Online style of ship. It it doesn't necessarily link exactly to how the, the continuity is, because, I mean, you look at the front, these red sticking out bits, I mean, those are torpedo launchers, I believe, those, those are weapon pods, um, and they just fire phasers from, I know set locations, but I don't, they don't put in, as far as I remember, they don't put in, like, phaser ball turrets and fire from the set four locations, it's a bit more general, um, which would kind of make sense, though, to give it a phaser strip, because then you'd actually have a location to shoot out from. Um, yeah, I know, stylistically, it works really well, actually. <laughs> Helps to break up yeah, and get um, more depth. Yeah, I'm fairly sure that it's not a phaser strip, yeah. just because it is supposed to be TOS style. And to be fair, the Constitution class doesn't have any visible ball turrets or anything on the top of not the saucer classic, no. or anywhere, really. Um, you know, if you get into Starfleet Battles and stuff, you obviously see that, which yeah. is a nice addition, in my opinion. But I just think that would be really wicked cool as a phaser strip, and I would be down for that. I, I would, too. It looks awesome. Um, and just, like, subtle detailing. One thing that, that that stuck out to you, one thing that sticks out to me um, is, so look on top of that torpedo launcher, which I love how that's a retro Miranda, it looks great. It's like a, uh, well, it's like a navigational buoy deflector beacon turret. What do you think that is? Because you've got a navigational deflector at the bottom, so what's that? It's mm, like long range subspace antenna, maybe? Mm. Um, maybe it's, I don't know. Because <laughs> we don't see that kind of thing in any other any other TOS ships, really. And we know this is so older kind of... than the Connie because it's 1701. So this is an older site. Well, I mean, it's a newer ship. I mean, I should say that around. It's a newer ship. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to say what that, that is. I mean, it kind of reminds me of Pacific 201 and what mm. Eric Henry did with the with all the stuff he's got on top of his ship. Mm. Um, interesting. Yeah, I don't know what that would be. So, um, we haven't looked at the, the after the ship, but I think it's fair to say the roll bar with the torpedoes is likely to have after torpedoes. I think that's probably likely at this point. Would that make mm. this ship more heavily armed, do you think? If it has, I know the Defiant has after firing f torpedoes, but let's take it as just the original Connie variant. The fact that it has forward and after torpedoes, we assume it has the same phaser laid out. In your, again, TOS professional opinion, would that make this ship as more powerful? Maybe uh, the classes are a more well armed. Uh, Connie of TOS style ship, I should say. It does look more well armed than a Constitution class, mm. absolutely. Uh, especially with those, like you said, those <laughs> red parts on the front of the saucer being probably weapons. Well, they yeah. are in Star Trek Online. Yeah. Uh, and then you got the the centerpiece on the roll bar there, which looks like it has two photon torpedo launchers facing forward, and like you said, probably some aft. So yeah, and I this... think it's more of a sturdier kind of Miranda style well Avenger style before it got changed to Miranda you know what I mean yeah. it was more heavily armed I would totally so buy yeah, that the TOS Miranda is called the Avenger class and they refits the Miranda anyway that's a, that's a whole different thing second part of that question then if it's more heavily armed and it's stouter um, do you think then that antenna could be the fleet command you know talking to all different ships dedicated so this is like a dedicated fleet ship I, I don't see why not. I mean, <laughs> we all know that the 
the dreadnought are mm. in charge of battle fleets and they mm. have the rear facing sensor dish which everybody mm. says why is there a deflector on the back it's not a deflector in <laughs> tos that on the constitution class ship was originally a sensor dish not a deflector dish hmm. that got retconned later um so it's a hmm. sensor and the one on the rear of the dreadnoughts was basically to coordinate traffic and mm. mm-hmm. also a long-range subspace antenna for communicating with starfleet command kind of b- behind them probably <laughs> um so who knows maybe that's just a version of that that's i, I think likely. one thing's worth pointing out we are approaching this design in terms of the canonical continuity less so in terms of its role in star trek online because it's especially built for that game but we're thinking mm-hmm. about it in the wider scope things that they might not even thought about because we go into this sort of depth um is there anything else that, that says it to you about this design, or shall we go to the next picture? Because we're only on the first picture. <laughs> well, let's go to the next picture, because I can't think of anything offhand. Oh, okay. <clears throat> A top view. Mm-hmm. Well, now I get your NX01 vibe. I mean, that's like... That, that's, yeah. You know, that that's just TOSified a bit. Um, is that you think that's what they were going for? I don't know. I th- well, yeah, I think they kind of wanted to tie it in a little bit with the way that they have those um, pontoon kind of things attached to the saucer. Um, kind of as a visual cue, maybe. So you think of an older ship like the NX to show its design lineage. Yeah. Uh, hmm. So is that... on the? So you got that torpedo thing on the center of the roll bar there. Yes. Um, just looking at. He's thinking. Nah, never mind. Never what were you gonna say? No, say. What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say something about. It looks like the same kind of thing as on the NX class in that middle part. There's something there. See, like this. Oh, well that. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that's. But I mean... that's that's this little sensor thing antenna we were talking about. Um, so well, I don't know. But hold up the NX01. Well, I mean, stylistically, I mean, that's very close in terms of you know, rough shapes. You know, if you do, if you just make it more squarey. Um, yeah, maybe it could function similar like that. Maybe. I don't know. Um, it's an interesting different style of design because, I mean, I think one thing that, that this ship now makes me think back to is it's sort of reintroducing the idea that... You know, the uh, the, De- the Daedalus is a part of the continuity because that has those very cylinder secondary hulls. You know, that is much more about cylinders as a very blunt, you know, this is the simple shape. So you've got these two uh, pontoons and that for me is a very much the visual, you know, the Connie is, is one styling and then they've taken the more Daedalus style uh, maybe to shrink it down, maybe to, to whatever, but it's it's certainly linking in, and again, that's great stylistically because it's how many shapes can you use to put all this stuff together? But they can they they've done a great job of making something different. Now, oh yeah, exactly. Um, but the thing I'm thinking too is, where's the shuttle bay? Are the pontoons each its what? own separate shuttle bay? <laughs> Where are the impulse engines? I mean, we need to shut it from the back. We do. Um, it's really answer that. So shuttle bay, impulse engines, okay. But I mean, uh, well, before we, because I think that those answers probably come in the next picture. Like, what do you actually think about having that that aft part of the bridge module, and what do you think is there? Because that's a serious added um, piece. I mean, what's your take on that? Uh. It's hard to say, just extra internal volume, maybe more research labs, something like that. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing the view from the side so we can see how much secondary hull we have because yeah. I'm pretty sure it's got the same internal volume roughly as a conning if it's the same size. But that would that would tend to increase it and then make it more roomy than a mm. So, Well, it's likely to assert that those four windows at the front of the, the deck three are probably either the observation lounge or well, not the captain's quarters, but some sort of you know, like the Enterprise briefing D room. has briefing room exactly. So maybe having those command and control sections just after the um, you know deck one, just one small area. Maybe there's the you know briefing room, 
um, fleet commands, maybe there's you know just more functional spaces that I mean because this system because we know that the TOS Connie's bridge module is is you know uh, remo removable. Well, where are those lines exactly? Why couldn't they take out a few more bits of hull armor, put in that second you know, put in that second level, and then put the aft section? I don't see why that couldn't be a, a Connie variant as well. Maybe it's a uh, four mission functional add-on because hey, if you can add an extra you know eleven rooms. I mean, you know, diplomatic envoys. You got dedicated diplomatic um, conference rooms or a cinema, mm -hmm. <laughs> or an extra bowling alley. You know, so there you have go. bowling night. Yeah, yeah. Not just, not just one, like in the con. You could yeah. have like yeah. four or five lanes yeah. in there. Yeah, we've, we've worked it out. <laughs> let's go to the. Let's... <laughs> wow, that Ooh, is I like that. Not what I was expecting for a secondary hull. That's integrated. Well, it answers the shuttle bay question because it's there just like in the Connie at the back of the secondary hall there. Need better parking though. You need better uh, ability to park. What do you think of that, Stuart? As you, you're the Connie guy, what do you think of that? I absolutely love that. Yeah. The way they integrated that secondary hull into that saucer, that is sexy. I like that a lot. And what's hilarious is it's the simplest, most kit bash thing. But in my humble opinion, Makes a lot of sense. Why wouldn't you? If you want, if you want to shrink a Connie profile, I mean, if they went one step further, I mean, to be fair though, this think one step further, further. If you put the nacelle pylons yeah, on the saucer, then uh, you know, I made them either go down or up. You'd be almost one step away from the Miranda. Then take out secondary hull, you got Miranda. You know, you you, you keep lessening the, the 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 TOS profile and having it integrated. I mean, it's a little bit kibashi, but why not? It just brings it all the way in, you know, um, easier to transport. I mean, so it's more, um, you know, turbo lifts and, 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 yeah. It works. It works really well the way they integrated that because we've kind of seen this before, like on the Andor class, let's say, the way they have that attached with, like, a little stick <laughs> um, doesn't oh. really work. <laughs> um, you know, there's a little attachment point there that's kind of silly looking almost. Yeah. But... I mean, to integrate that into the Andor would be amazing. Mm. I love it. And, and and it also implies that it's very easily, uh, you know, separatable. That would be my interpretation from that as well, because you can see the obvious split points. Um, yeah, wow. Do you think engineering is in the same I, place I, with this, or do you think they've moved it, given the amount of mass and the way it all connects? Because wouldn't it make more sense to have the engines... Higher, maybe that new uh, that new bulkier section at the top to try and have the power transfer conduits rather than going throughout the ship. Yeah, I would put them in those two pontoons. The engineering, um, Ooh. personally, like two independent um, warp um, cores. <laughs> cores, <laughs> one on each side. Um, That's but a good the idea. lack of windows there is kind of confusing to me. If they had windows in that section, huh. I could see it being engineering, but it's kind of odd the way they have it. That is interesting. I don't know. That is really interesting. That, that. Huh. Do you think then it is literally technology that it might be, as you say, an engineering parts? And so rather than, you know, because you don't have windows in engineering, do you? So. You can. Maybe they've you know they've armed it up. I don't know. That, that's that's interesting, but it looks good. That's, an, that's a good looking side profile. Do you think they should have integrate? Well, actually, hold on. Forward phasers. Where are the forward phasers? Are they still there? What do you mean on the bottom of the saucer? Yeah, what, the, what the phasers. Are they still there? Well, we've kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, it'd be cool if that was a phaser strip. But I mean, no, I mean on the on the, on the bottom, the, the normal phasers, where well, they would be on the original version of the Connie. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there is different versions of the Connie, either Starfleet Battles or other, that have phasers on the bottom of the secondary hull, like 360 phasers, like on the refit. There's four of them. Okay. So maybe that's where the more phasers are. I just but yeah, that the... is, that is kind of... An interesting point that there's nothing there. Well, it can't. I mean, basically, what I was asking is, does this, where it connects, is that where? Because that looks to me about where the conventional phases should be, like almost the exact point. So, 
Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Would that then make sense for you that those two, um, what I said is mega phases based on the original Miranda design, should they be phases in this equation? Would that make a lot of sense for you? It doesn't, it doesn't exactly uh, cover up the weak spot, but in terms of firepower, does that make sense for them to be weapons? Uh, the roll bar there, mm -hmm. that would make perfect sense, but it just there's lack of detail there that makes me think it's not a phaser. All right, so the next picture we've got a shot of it from three quarter rear, which is cool. Yes, those look like impulse engines. Those big pontoons. That's I guess they are big, big. Ah, is that similar? Are they taking artistic cues from the Kelvin? Then do you think? Oh, probably. Hmm. <laughs> Just TOS Kelvin, just big, just big circles. Yeah. Now, and, well, one thing I just noticed too: those little pods we were just talking about, weapons-wise, on the roll bar, do have detailing on the back. Yep. So maybe there's some kind of rear kind of rear weapon. I mean, they look like phases so, to me. I'm gonna say those like phases. I mean, that's a great position to have aft phases. They're tapping directly into the weapon grid. Aft is not exactly the place you normally kit out weapons. Um, you probably we can see the deflector. But ball on top of the shuttle bay, which in the Defiant variant is phasers. I don't. I think that'd be a very unsafe way to fire phasers. So re-adding those um, makes a lot of sense, and definitely two after POs uh, right there. Yeah. What do you think about them being uh, the engines there? And they've got, you have got the shuttle bay. So it's, it seems like everything has transitioned over. What do, you, what do you think about the way it's been transitioned? Not a big fan of those be those pods being just dedicated impulse engines. Because they're so big. Why do they need impulse engines that big? Maybe they wanted to give it that. I mean, the Connie is not meant to be the, the most maneuverable ship in the fleet, is it? You know, um, Maybe it's trying to be this, you know, 200% the speed of a Connie. Because those impulse engines, I mean, you think about it just size wise, the Connie has them that big at the, at the end, and here they've got two this big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. It just it seems really odd to me. It, it it takes it to almost like a Buck Rogers style. It's a rocket kind of look, and I hate that because that's not what Star Trek's about. There's yes. no need for that big, undetailed, like no windows. So the no windows implies to me that that's all impulse engine that whole length. Yes, which is very unnecessary yep. and not. It doesn't fit with the tech as far as I'm concerned. Because you're right, if the Connie can get away with this much impulse, why do they need two things? Now, I'm fine with the speed. I, I completely agree with you. If we had seen half of them with window, like half of the windows, so you know only the last third is impulse. You've got, you know, there's a cargo bay door, there's an uh, arboretum like the refit, so just, just living space in the, in the first bit. And then maybe just where it hits the pontoons, you know, the, the bits connecting the, the engines, that's where it cuts off and that's where it has you know, nothing. Um, but yeah, interesting. So it's a great looking mm, shot, though. It's a great the way it's yeah. lit. It's a great looking shot. <laughs> yeah, it um, does. And I'm sure they just did it because of Star Trek Online. They need that look for when you're flying through space to have the impulse engine streaking behind you. So what better place to put them than somewhere like that? I think that looks it looks very cool. But although, I don't know if tech wise, it makes sense. To be fair, though, and I just realized that the NX01. That's exactly what the impulse engines are. Those two blue, you know, nicely small. Yeah. I mean, that compared to yeah. this, I mean, that's at least twice the size minimum. I mean, that shows the, the tech advancement. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I know what you're saying, but I don't know. I think that was kind of a one thing I don't like about this design that could have been tweaked is those pontoons. But we have to find stuff we don't like. But let's go to the last picture, which is another nice three quarters, just... Nicely lit, and I, I mean, how TOS is this ship? Seriously, it is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but well, that thing that concerns me that they could have corrected or fixed, in my opinion, mm. is those mega phasers on the roll bar yeah. should have some kind of detailing on the front to be some kind of weapon. I think that'd make it look a lot better. Like I. I makes sense almost not to have weapons there because it seems dangerous but at the same time if they're getting fed from the warp cores or the impulse engines in this case <laughs> i don't know i don't know what to say about that I well think... actually going back to the talking about those impulse engines for a second okay it could be that there are warp cores in each of those pontoons because that is the feed for the the, the nacelle as well mm -hmm. so it could all be warp core length 
and then the very end is the impulse engine which feeds off the warp core somehow to have enhanced impulse maybe that'd be cool and then the regular feeds go up to the nacelles so it's kind of it's kind of they said to them you know the designer said let's supercharge a ship how do we do that two warp cores let's put everything in one direct feed and they have more secondary hull space so rather than engineering hull we call it secondary hull to give ourselves that extra boost plus the added other bit then actually you've actually got quite a lot more uh physical space living space in the connie and yet it's a smaller if it, package if, if that yeah if that secondary hull has no need for an engineering like in the connie it's basically all engineering in the heart of that secondary hull hmm. i mean it could still be the same it could still be the exact same configuration have the engineering in the secondary hull have the warp feed thing going up and then back to the uh, engine i i just it's had possible. another thought we don't often do this but if you go back up uh, if you go back to the side view <laughs> Very rare to do this on, on track yards. What if mm -hmm. this is the NX refit TOS? What if that was the thought process? So there's a second, there's a, there's a warp engine, there's a warp core, sorry, in the secondary hull, like the Connie, and also in the two pontoons, which they could then separate if you want that second that engineering hull, which leaves you the primary hull. And the warp cores that can still get away. But you've got extra power generation, redundancy, and, and living space. That's interesting, but I honestly can't see this ship separating. I see it very integrated. I do see I, like it would be cool to see it have that part drop off and have like a hollowed out part where it nestled in. I mean, you could it could be a plug and play ship then too. You can plug in different modules for what you need. Even use it as a cargo carrier. Yeah, um, that'd be or a great. If, if you're going on a long. Yeah, if you went on a deep space long mission, you can attach all this extra living space. That's kind of neat. But if you then just look but. at if you look at it without the secondary hull, then it's very much just an an X an, an, an X class with the roll bar Miranda rather than T uh, S rather than um, uh, an X style. So actually, yeah, this is a a very fascinating you know redevelopment of 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 the different tropes. And I wonder if we've gone into more thought than they went into. Um, I don't, I don't know. Oh, probably. You always do. <laughs> you overthink these things. But let's end on the first picture, which is a nice high-res, beautiful image. Um, first Stow TOS, there's a couple of these ships. We'll be looking at them all. I have been talking to the Stow people about these ships at some point. Who knows? We'd love to think that. But what are your closing thoughts on the Ranger and the Ranger class? Um, as I said, it's a fantastic TOS design. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's a great addition to the fleet. I can see yeah. it fitting right in. Yeah. And um, I do have a few little problems with it that they could tweak, but we've already discussed those. Um, but overall, a great addition to not only Star Trek um, and TOS, but also Star Trek Online. Yeah. I'm looking forward to playing it in the game. It is very cool. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. It's a great synergy of classic and non-classic design elements, and I'm really impressed with how the Stowe team, they've created some incredibly odd and amazing feature designs, but to see them go back and, you know, try and really live within the, the era um, is incredible, and I'm really impressed. It shows, like, th just this ship and the, the whole expansion shows they are true Trek fans. They get it. They love it. And they have a passion for things that we have a passion for. And when you get people who have that sort of passion, like that genuine passion, they come up with something like this. And you know, we are we can be critical. We 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 have very high standards, and this works. So well done. That's a big that's a big endorsement. Track yards approved. <laughs> Absolutely. Is that the closing thought then, Stuart? Track yards approved. Shall we uh, say goodbye to these uh, fine folks? We should. I'm looking forward to doing more of these Star Trek Online TOS ships in the future, so stay tuned, guys. Well, thank you guys for tuning in for this Trek Yard special TOS Stow. Go watch Stow, go watch TOS, go play TOS, go play Stow, because you can do all those things now, because they're combined. And if you want to support this show, the Trek Yards show, go to Patreon and donate for our monthly donation service. That helps just pay and support us, do everything we do every single week. We do a lot of content every single week for you guys. It's all new track, all here on track yards. So this is it for this week from me, Commander Cockins. And me, Stuart Foley. I mean, Captain Foley. I mean, wow, that was weird. Yeah, Captain Foley. Bye, guys. <laughs>